Assistant Vice President for Enrollment Management and Director of Admissions here at Xavier University of Louisiana. While we regret we were unable to offer you an in-person experience, we came up with the next best thing, a virtual platform. Lanyap, it's catered to admitted students, and we congratulate those of you who have made it thus far. We recognize that we'll probably also have prospective students out there. Welcome. We encourage you to engage with us, and hopefully you'll learn a lot of information that will even encourage you to apply and or complete your application process right now. Today, we're prepared to offer you two live sessions that will feature Xavier faculty and current students on hand. Lanyap means a little something extra, so this is our way of serving on that commitment. So engage with us. We welcome you. And when we talk about outcomes focused, we're proud of the fact that we hold the accolade of having the most African Americans that go on to complete their medical degree. That means we're thinking beyond the bachelor's degree. A plethora of students will go on to pursue professional programs as well. So join us today. Ask questions. Ask questions of our Xavier faculty and our current students so that you can really see yourself here. At Xavier, we're here to serve you. Welcome home. Welcome to Xavier University of Louisiana. You are here because Xavier stood up for you among all the universities and colleges in this country. Perhaps it is because we educate more students, African Americans, who go on to become medical doctors, physicians, than any college in this country. Perhaps it is because of the judges, the lawyers, the leaders, servants of humanity who come from Xavier, phenomenal artists. You are here to become one of them. And when on the all before Declaration Day, you choose Xavier, remember this is because we also choose you. Because we believe in you. You are coming here to be your best self. You have exceeded the expectation, and that's best self at Xavier is when you become truly excellent. You will follow in the footsteps of great women and men, our alumni, like Mayor Cantrell, the mayor of New Orleans, Ivan Lamel, the federal judge, the P3 Pulse of Perseverance doctors, and of course, that remarkable artist, Terence Osborne. You'll be fulfilling the legacy of Catherine Drexel, who founded this university, the only historically black and Catholic university. And by that we mean a university that has welcomed students of all faiths with the expectation that they will realize their best self and go on to serve humanity. You will be one of them, you will go forth from Xavier and contribute to what we call the just and humane society. And that calling is what we will realize in the four years or six years, depending on your major at Xavier and you will be our gift to the future. What I really want to know is, are you all coming to Xavier? Yes or no? I know you're here for a reason. You've come to learn about the greatest gift to education in this country, Xavier University. I mean it. Come learn about Xavier. Welcome. I'm Camelia Moses of Purdue. I'm the Dean for the College of Arts and Sciences here at Xavier University. I want to welcome you to our virtual menu. It is my pleasure to be able to say to you how much we appreciate your interest in Xavier. As the Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences, the faculty and I have prepared a wonderful and exciting curriculum it is our philosophy that you, sh you should always question and always wonder. At Xavier, we are known for our reputation of getting students into professional degrees as well as medical school. But as a dean, one of the things that I am most interested in is that when you get on campus, that our faculty welcome you with radical hospitality and Ubuntu. Radical hospitality is a concept that was spoken in 1 Peter 4 and 8. 
where we are commanded to love each other fervently and to offer love as a way of covering a multitude of, of sins. As a dean, I think it's very important that love means that we provide a curriculum that challenges you, that helps you to think critically, and to be able to always question. And then, give you the skills to go and find the answer. You're about to hear from a very dynamic and exciting faculty who are going to talk to you from the various programs that we offer here at Xavier. We offer new areas that you may never have even heard of, such as the digital humanities, where everyone knows that we do well in science and math in our STEM fields, but we also are one of the first undergraduate institutions to have neuroscience. We also are very social justice focused, so I'm, I'm looking forward to the faculty sharing with you the various projects that we have going on here at Xavier. Ubuntu is a very interesting concept that most people have not heard of, but we practice it here at Xavier because when Sister, uh, when Mother Catherine had the concept of Xavier, she wanted us to be change agents in the world, to be just and humane. And so Ubuntu reminds us, I am because you are, and you are because I am. So when you get on the campus in the fall, you'll see this as you go from building to building and work with our faculty. And hopefully you will be able to come, become a part of our community to help us to continue to um, take our mission globally. So I welcome you to Xavier virtually, and I look forward to meeting you when you get on campus in the fall. Again, welcome. We're so excited to have you here today. Today we have our academic panel in which we have some amazing Xavier faculty ready to talk to you and address any questions that you may have. I would like to take the time now to allow them to introduce themselves and to describe what their work is as it pertains to Xavier. I'll start to my left here. Dr. Russell Frazier, political science at Xavier University. Pamela Waldron Moore, Chair of the Division of Social and Behavioral Sciences and Professor of Political, political Science. Nana Azali from the Department of Chemistry and I'm representing the Division of Mathematical and Physical Sciences. Dr. Joe Ricks, I'm Chairman of the Division of Business and Professor of Sales and Marketing at Xavier. I am Michelle Belboisier. I'm a faculty member in the Department of Biology, which is in the Division of Biological and Applied Health Sciences. And I would be remiss if I did not also add, I am a class of 1986 graduate of Xavier University of Louisiana. Good morning. My name is Dr. Rachel Davis. I am representing the Division of Education and Counseling. I am a program chair of CNI, and I am also a proud <laughs> graduate of the Xavier University of Louisiana. And I'm Dr. Judith Moranti. I chair the Division of Education and Counseling, and I'm a professor of counselor education. Awesome. Th again, thank you all so much for being here for virtual Lanyap, right? Well, to jump right into it, I wanted to let our students know while we may not have all majors represented here today, we can certainly answer any questions that you may have. You can always email the Office of Admissions at admissions at zula.edu, where we can definitely put you in contact with someone who would be more than happy to cater to your questions and answer them head on. But launching into that, because we do have a lot of things that are represented up here on this panel today, I want to talk about this phrase, hands-on, early on. What does that mean to you as it pertains to internship and research opportunities in, among your different areas of study? I know in the Division of Education and Counseling, we have early uh, times for our students to go into the field and Dr. Davis will speak to you about that, but we believe that our educational philosophy is you learn to do by doing. And so we give our students many opportunities to be able to do that as they enter early field experiences. One of the strengths of our program is that our students are in the field immediately. Every class that you will take as a student in the Division of Education and Counseling has with it a field practicum in which students spend 10 to 20 hours per semester involved, engaged, 
with students in K-12 schools. So in the division of um, mathematical and physical sciences where the Department of Chemistry is located in, we have a lot of um, research active faculty. So we have um, pretty much uh, as a freshman, you can be involved in someone's research group. And these uh, studies have shown that the more hands-on uh, research activity you have, the better um, your uh, core knowledge of uh, the information that you're getting in the classroom. And of course, this translates uh, later on to how you um, do in uh, standardized tests, entrances into uh, professional um, uh, schools, et cetera, et cetera. In the Division of Business, most of our students do intern. Um, we have some that we're able to uh, offer students and that we control within the division. Uh, additionally, you know, the, the culture is where a lot of our students can go find particular opportunities that they're looking for, and it shows up also in our placement rates. I mean, we have a very high percentage of our students that uh, leave Xavier with uh, very high responsibility first type jobs uh, in their professional areas. About 80, upper 80 percent of our students who are placed are placed in areas consistent with what they studied. Awesome, thank you so much for that. Well, and kind of leaning into that a little bit more, with that, it seems like it requires a lot of engagement with your students. One of the things that I know that we really preach around here is the fact that we, are, we consider ourselves to be very relational. So in that, offering those different internships and research opportunities with your students, how are you able to foster those relationships? And give me maybe some examples of different um, different opportunities that you've had to engage with your students to create and establish those relationships? Well, I would say that one of the things that is done in um, the science departments, in order to encourage students to form these regular relationships, these very comfort relationships with their academic advisors, and at Xavier, academic advising is done within the department of the student's major. We actually um, encourage students by giving them a few extra credit points in their general biology and general chemistry classes for having weekly check-in meetings with their advisors. The purpose of this is not because of that small number of extra credit points, but the purpose is to get the student to have that person that they're seeing on a weekly basis outside of the classroom in the faculty member's office so that the faculty member has the opportunity to ask questions like, how are your classes going? I notice your grade in this class is a little bit lower than your grade in the other class. Are you taking advantage of the tutoring opportunities that are available on campus? It also gives faculty members the ability to ask questions like, you're far away from home. How has your transition been? Mm -hmm. Are you making friends, et cetera, et cetera. When you have those conversations with students one-on-one, -on -one, you know which kinds of summer internship research um, experiences that might be well fitted for that student. You know what kinds of on-campus extracurricular activities might be you know, a great fit for that student. And you get to, uh, to, again, have that comfort level between the faculty member and the student. And it is that comfort level that truly sets Xavier apart. One of the areas that we um, consider in this, because the Division of Social and Behavioral Sciences is focused on social justice issues, we have students who constantly meet in their different departments, uh, mass communications, political science, psychology, to talk about things like what they need in terms of internships. So we have students who are interested in international issues, um, which some of us can address, and we also prepare them to go out and work in these areas so that they can get a sense of the world far away and bring that world into their daily lives, their classrooms, their areas of study. And so, yes, we do know exactly which students are better prepared for which opportunities. And one of the things I found at Xavier is that we have a, a, a plethora of opportunities that come to us because our students are so diverse and they're so established and spectacular in their own way. One of the key assets of, of the mission is that we are asked to prepare them for leadership and service. Um, and so getting them involved in internships, summer internships or internships during the semester, where we actually offer credit for their participation in internships. 
those things allow them to become the leaders that they actually eventually become. Um, we also have student organizations, several organizations, whether it be Psychi or the Political Science Club or the Young Democrats Association or the Pre-Law Association. And these organizations also allow us to have a better out of the classroom experience with them. So that is one of the things I really appreciate about being at Xavier and certainly you, when you get here, would be privileged to have that participation as well. Um, yeah. Sorry. sorry. <laughs> um, just to go off on um, what uh, Dr. Moore is talking about with the organizations, um, in the event that some students feel uncomfortable when they first come here um, to find a faculty member or to talk to them, we also have um, uh, the Chemistry Club, which offers a uh, peer mentoring program, which students have loved. Um, so initially, just like uh, Dr. Bozier was saying, um, you may have so many, you may miss home, you may feel isolated, you haven't made friends yet, but this peer mentoring allows you to m essentially be matched up with a mentor within your own um, uh, uh, set of students that are in your major. Um, and this allows you to ask them questions about either classes, about different programs, et cetera, et cetera, but also to have this built-in relationship with another person that is close to, um, uh, that has shared, has shared experiences with what you're either going through or will go through. So this really helps sort of build that community feel that we've all been talking about. The relationships with us becomes really important because most of our students will be leaving Xavier going into professional environments. Uh, we, have few, we have some that go directly to graduate and professional schools, but most are going to professional environments and then making those decisions later. So trying to figure out how to make those particular decisions, uh, when to go straight to graduate school versus going into the workforce, what types of jobs and positions are that put a student in position to get to their longer term goal, these are the types of conversations that we have to have on a regular basis, and the, res the relationships that we're able to establish allows us to do that. Um, I just had a conversation the last two days with two students. Uh, one who received, uh, admits to about eight different law schools and a full-time offer. So we're talking through those types of things and how to make those decisions. Uh, another student who has gotten a full-time offer but also going to graduate school to complete our CPA. What the schools are, what are the advantages, what are the long-term goals, and how do we set that up? So having the relationships with students and having them to have the trust in you to guide them through those types of positions, it's really an awesome, uh, it's an awesome thing. Dr. Ricks, you mentioned the relationship that you have with your students to assist them or facilitate decisions, help them to come to the best. It's something that we do all the time in the Division of Education and Counseling. When our students are in the field, we're in the field pointing where, uh, helping them to see where research and practice meets, where the rubber meets the road, mm -hmm. and we're there helping them to have those conversations and to observe with teachers and K-12 students. One of the things that we, we are particularly proud is that I was sharing with some of our undergraduates this morning is that the majority of our students who are, have already began to receive uh, offers for employment. Yeah. Um, and they are at the point where, oh, what do I do now? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right now, 26% of our 2020 class have been placed. Yeah, and I think it's also very important because we're preparing our students to go into the helping profession <coughs> that our faculty also models that. They see our relationships and they realize how important it is that those relationships are carried over. So as we're watching them in their field and interacting with them on that personal level, they begin to realize that the lives that they're touching, they're gonna make a difference. Hopefully that we're making the same difference for them as they're watching us. So I think the old adage stands very loud and clear. Students do not care what you know until they know that you care. Mm -hmm. And I think it's so important that we communicate that to our students through our collegial relationships here on campus. Susie, go ahead. And just to uh, back up a little bit, uh, our students are very concerned about their matriculation once they get to the institution. So we are so close to our students 
and we're so knowledgeable of what they are going to be doing from A through Z as far as when they get here as freshmen and where they will end up as seniors and then where they will go after they graduate, we establish a matriculation plan with those students on day one. Those students know exactly how long it should take them to finish at Xavier University. If students want to engage in a hyper type of program where they finish uh, within three years versus four years, those students will have that plan mapped out for them by their faculty advisor. So again, our students know exactly uh, where they are going to be on day one once they get to Xavier University. Well, we actually have a question about the um, curriculum and we have one student who is wanting to know in particular, is it, are students able to double major or double minor here at Xavier? Absolutely. Yes. Um, especially since we have introduced a new core, the 2018 um, core, it allows students so many opportunities for free lectures and whatnot that they can blend those in some kind of way to ensure that they have two uh, full majors. They can even have one full major and two full uh, minors. What they're trying to do or trying to achieve and what we encourage them to do is get maximum benefit from their college experience. And double majoring is one of those ways for them to do that. Mm -hmm. And it actually goes back to the relationship question earlier, right? Because we get a, I get a number of students to come in to talk about double majors, double minors, and other things. So I always have them to back up a little bit. Okay, what are you trying to accomplish? Yeah. Now, based on what you're trying to accomplish, then let's look and see what makes sense. Does a double major make sense, or does a double minor make sense? Or does it make sense for you really not to do that because you're just, you, you don't really know? And does it make sense for you to just kind of get out and get some life experiences to help you determine where you're trying to go? So le let's take a look at really what you're trying to accomplish. All these things are options, and it's great for students to have those options, but we need to have really good conversations with our students to make sure that they're, they're not picking something out of the air right now because it sounds good, but it actually fits to what they're trying to get to in the long term. And I think what Dr. Ricks is saying is that we're not only preparing our students to go out into the world of work, but we're also preparing them to be able to look at not only their vocations, but their avocations. And so they can really tailor make their curriculum. And I think that as you sit down and talk to the students about what do you like, what gives you the passion, where do you want your, your, your journey to take you, and I think then our students begin to realize that all of the free electives that we have, the ways that they can major and minor, not only prepares them for their vocation in life, but they're also doing something that they love and they cherish. Yeah. All right. What have been some courses that have stood out amongst the student body that you, maybe you can talk about that are offered here at Xavier that's become pretty popular? Well, within the chemistry department, um, one of the courses that uh, is extremely popular with the students is actually a um, research uh, methods course. So um, students have an option to take uh, multiple different uh, um, um, lab type courses in order to fulfill this requirement, but what they really like to do is to take the option where they're able to actually um, locate a uh, research mentor within the department um, that has a uh, project that uh, they uh, either are, um, they have an affinity, affination for or they um, are interested in that type of work for uh, post-graduate. Uh, so for instance, um, one of my research students, one of who took this course, um, she started out at Xavier, um, as, you know, as a uh, uh, pre-med student. And as she uh, went through the major, um, uh, she decided, oh, you know, I'm gonna try out this course. She tried out the course. She um, was in our research group and she fell in love with, um, you know, the research side of things. And not, she was able to then um, get really great work done um, present in multiple different uh, venues at national conferences, and she used that to actually propel her not just to go into a medical program, but she's doing research 
So she's in a uh, um, MD PhD program. That's so. a tough. That's a tough question, Ms. Yes. Brown. Mm -hmm. um, just because if you talk about the division of education and counseling, all of our uh, students are interested in all of our yeah. classes, of course. And, but I would, <laughs> I would say that in the landscape, the educate of today, that one of the most popular and probably uh, important classes that our students take are the practicums, the reading classes mm -hmm. that prepare them to teach reading. Um, so if we have students who are coming from secondary to major in secondary education, they're still expected to teach reading and have some knowledge of how students, K-12 students, uh, learn reading. And so we have a dynamic professor who teaches the reading classes. Um, the accept, our exceptional children's class when, in which our students learn the different exceptionalities that our K-12 learners have uh, come to us with. That's a dynamic class. My class that I'm teaching this semester, multicultural education, it's a dynamic class in which we learn, our students learn and engage in conversations and experiences that teach them about the diverse learners from language diversity, um, everything. So um, it's a tough question. If I had to pick out which they would say, of course my class. That's right. fair. <laughs> I think one of the most unique classes um, is our sales for social impact course. Mm -hmm. We partnered with one of our uh, corporate partners, uh, 3M Company, and we bring students, and they're not just business students, we bring students from multiple areas, uh, and they have to develop a business plan that has a um, sustainability component where it, you, you know they have good sales marketing where they can generate revenue to continue their program. But those programs have to be, and you have to partner with people who work with people at the bottom of the socioeconomic pyramid. Mm -hmm. Uh, they develop these plans and they're taken to uh, corporate headquarters in, uh, in Minnesota at the end of the semester to present these plans to 3M corporate uh, business leaders and executives. They get feedback from those plans and just this year, uh, the nonprofits that they work for, they actually compete for grants to help those, uh, those nonprofits execute their missions. So it, it's pretty cool, and, and the amazing. feedback that we get from yeah. students is like, you know, it's yeah. life changing for them. So um, and the hands on that sounds yeah. really yeah, 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 yeah. it's really interesting. Before you move on, I just want to say that all students who come to Xavier will be required to have, you know, Xavier is a, a black and Catholic institution. So they, you know, our students, those who aren't Catholic, oh, I have to take a religion class. Well, you would be surprised at the diverse mm -hmm. religion classes, types of classes that right. our students engage in. And it's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing. And the African American diaspora courses, oh man, everything from servitude and slavery all the way to jazz, uh, African American jazz. So there's a, uh, as the word today is plethora. There's yeah. a plethora of courses that help us to that, uh, that invite our students to engage in the mission that Mother Catherine Drexel had for us. Mm -hmm. So and it's a really, it's a, it's a wonderful place to be. Uh, and I think also, I think the students will find that the social learning components of our classes are just so rich in experiences. It puts them out into the community. It gets them to know what their community needs, when we do our needs assessments, when we have our community gardens out with our senior citizens, our students, you can really see the maturity of our students as they reach out to those in the community in need. And I think that that fulfills our mission here at Xavier University also. As Dr. Waldron Moore said, we have a great emphasis on social action and social justice, mm -hmm. but we have to put that into action and we have to have it as incorporated into our curriculum so that it's just a natural part mm -hmm. of that ever-ending mission involvement. The way, you one just of the said, ways oh, that Xavier is, is really known for doing that is through service learning. Mm -hmm. And Xavier has offered uh, faculty opportunities and past to have service learning grants in order to incorporate those ideas in our classroom and to make them real. And I can just talk about one of the opportunities that I've had. Um, just remember a young lady service, through service learning, she created, we live in Hurricane Delta. And so she created a packet, she created a learning experience for her K-12 students in which they were able to help prepare their parents for a uh, hurricane season that was coming and incorporated all of the, the PK-12 standards that the student had to learn. So we are 
we are charged with that mission and we, we definitely make sure it happens. And, and I, I think it's important to note that our students take that with them when they leave us. Mm -hmm. um, I can think of my former students who have been <coughs> selected as resident of the year mm -hmm. because they have that, that leadership component that is a part of our mission and a part of so much of what we do here. You know, leadership, um, being resident of the year at an entire um, hospital system that has residencies in many, many departments, that's kind of a big deal. I can think of another student who, after he left Xavier and was enrolled in medical school still himself, he raised the funds and got the core of senior medical students and residents in the community he was living in at the time to start providing free health care to the homeless population in that community. Wow. And that kind of leadership and leadership for the betterment of society is the kind of thing that we expect Xavier students to do. And indeed, they prove us right all the time and they do those things. Thank you for touching on that, our mission. That's something that seems to really resonate here at Xavier's, the fact that we're very, very mission focused. And for those of you who aren't aware, when we talk about our mission, we are really talking about the fact that we really want to bring on leaders here at Xavier who will go on to promote a more just and humane society. So as we're talking here today, I know that you've heard elements of that been discussing. I want to turn the attention a little bit to the rigor of our curriculum. Um, many of our students that come here, you know, they are, they're used to making A's and B's and they're new students. Um, they are, more than half of our students actually come from out of state. So they're coming to a brand new location. Um, combining all of that, they get here that first year, that first semester, they become a little bit overwhelmed just because they've heard of the rigor, but now they're actually experiencing it. What, if, what things are being set in place from a faculty standpoint to make sure that we're supporting students because clearly we're supporting them because they're going on to do great things. How are we, how have we been able to hone, hone in on that? Well, first I'd like to say one of the funniest things I heard last semester um, was from a student. Um, she said, do you know how many people are currently uh, tweeting and communicating with whatever other platforms y'all young people use. Um, I thought I was smart until I got to Xavier. Um, we will work you very hard, and Xavier will work you hard in your major, but also in all of the classes that you take as a part of your core curriculum and your electives. Um, you'll find that you work very, very diligently in all of the classes. However, you're not working independently, you're not working without support. We have very, very, very high standards, but we also have the most dedicated support structure. Um, there are free resource centers where there is peer tutoring in so many of our classes, in chemistry, in biology, in math. We have a writing center that will proofread papers for you, et cetera, et cetera. So those kinds of services are available on campus, services that if you went for private tutoring, you might have to pay $25, $30 an hour for that. But there is a cohort of students on Xavier's campus who are available to students who are struggling, who need a little bit extra help. Um, you have more direct access to your actual faculty members at Xavier. You have class sizes that tend to be a little bit smaller. At many universities, a general biology class has 100 or 200 students. So there's no opportunity for the faculty member to truly have in-office sessions one-on-one -on -one with students. That's not the case here. Um, our, our classes tend to be smaller than, than classes at many other institutions, and that's good for student learning, that's good for student support when they are struggling with some of these more challenging concepts. We also have a system of supplemental instructor in many of our courses where um, a student who has already taken the class and who has done very well in the class is trained how to do review sessions. And they hold weekly review sessions. They'll take one-on-one -on -one appointments with the students who are currently taking the class. So we have lots and lots of things that are sort of woven into the fabric of Xavier that will help you to deal with the fact that the level that you're being challenged on the university level is different and greater than the level that you would get at most high schools. Some of the, just to piggyback on some of, mm -hmm. some of the things that you said, Dr. Boisier, is that um, one of the things I really love about our program and our school is that we're small enough to be hands-on. Mm -hmm. In a division of education, and in, in 
working with the students. When our students struggle in a need, many of them come to us gradu having graduated from high school, having never learned to study. Mm -hmm. They just, you know, they're big fish in small ponds. And so the Student uh, Academic Success Office, our SAFEL office, they have workshops that will teach students how to study, how to hone in. Dr. Adrian Woods and Dr. Nathaniel Holmes and his team are hands-on. All you have to do is shoot an email to either one and they will respond back with, this is where your students should, should, should report. Um, and one of the things that in the Division of Education, we are standards driven because of our professional organizations that allow us to certify students. So we have to meet certain standards. So our students have to have certain GPAs. Our students have to pass certain tests. And so when our students need assistance, we provide assistance, but we also have uh, assistance and their programs on campus that assist us. And I think a big part of this is that we have a wonderful system that's called the Early Alert System. Mm -hmm. So our students do not have to wait to see if they're not doing well. Not only have they talked with us individually, but those early alerts really help them to know what they have to do to be successful in our classes. So it's, the rigor is, is critical. Many of our students stay here in Louisiana, find their jobs. Our partnerships that we have out in the community, they expect us to have that rigor. And so our students know right away that Yes, we demand excellence, but they do too. Our students are demanding the excellence for themselves so that when they go out, not only do they represent Xavier, those true Xavierites know that these are the, mm -hmm. these are the things that they learned that were really important to them. So we've got a lot of help for our students. If we take them in, we want to graduate them, mm -hmm. yes. so we'll do whatever we can to really help them to succeed. I think and it awesome. really, Sorry. I think it really connects to mission, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Because if the mission is to develop leaders, you have to have the rigor to do that. Mm -hmm. And one of the most mis, misinformed or misconceptions about leadership is that leaders are supposed to know everything. That's just not realistic, no. right? So if you're coming to a place to develop your leadership skills, then you have to have the rigor to do that, which means you have to expand yourself. We have to, un and we understand that you are expanding yourself, so we have to be able to put the things in place and the support systems in place to allow people and young people to be successful in doing that. So we put a lot of intent and a lot of work into that so we can maintain the type of rigor that we need to maintain to challenge, push, and stretch students so they really grow into the leaders that, that we need. We have a that student that actually, in. sorry, go, uh, go ahead. That ties into something that Dr. Moranti said. You know, we have to model mm -hmm. the rigor. Mm -hmm. We have to show them that right. we're committed and they need to be good. So there's a saying, the best leaders are great followers. And so if they follow us, and others follow them. And so we have student groups that come together and work together as well as part of the um, support system at Xavier. Thank you, thank you for those robust, robust answers. We actually had a student that asked the question and acknowledged, well, I know that we are in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, I know that are there still study abroad opportunities that are available? And where are they in, ingrained in some of the different core curriculums? Do you have any information on, on that amongst some of your programs? So the study, the student actually acknowledged that. Yeah, the, the study abroad programs are, are here. And we've had them and we'll continue to have them. Uh, but I think we also have to be cognizant right now we don't Correct. know where we are. Correct. There, there's a lot of unknowns and until we get a little bit more certainty about what's happening, you know, when and where those programs will continue, we have to kind of wait and see until we get some really good information. Uh, but what we do know is that they have been a part of the Xavier experience for a long time and they will continue to be a part of the Xavier experience once we figure out what's happening. Thank you for that. Now I know we're kind of tying our time up a little bit, but I want to hear from each of you, what would be a piece of advice that you would give to a new incoming student as it pertains to Xavier? It can be anything. 
but just something, a little nugget that you would want to share with a new student, whether it be regarding to your programs, the Xavier community, your own experience as an alum, um, or just in the different relationships that you've been able to formulate with the students that you've encountered over the years. What would be that piece of advice as students are trying to make their final decision or to the student out there who's chiming in and kind of listening and just wanting to try to learn, they're wanting to learn a little bit more about what Xavier has to offer. I would, I would definitely say make sure that the institution um, has what you want. Uh, from a faculty standpoint and from a programmatic standpoint, students should definitely make sure that they research the faculty at the institutions. Say for instance, if you want to be a political scientist uh, and you want to focus on a certain area of political science, um, let's say like a um, sub area like public administration, you probably want to research that particular department and make sure that they have a faculty member in that department that focuses on public administration, that have engaged in research that has to do with the public administration. Once you get to the institution and you get into the classroom, don't be afraid to speak up mm -hmm. in the classroom. Get involved. One thing I do is I utilize a Socratic method of instruction. That is to get the student talking. I want to know if this student understands the material that they have read. I'm only able to do that if I get the student talking. It is okay to be wrong in the classroom. The classroom is a lab. We will get it right in the classroom so that when you leave the classroom, you can speak in an intelligible way once you interact with individuals outside of the classroom. So that's my take on the matter. I want to agree and support him because um, this is exactly what we push. The importance of coming with an open mind and being ready to challenge. I tell students that they should challenge the authors that they read. They should challenge the um, instruction that they get presented. Not challenge in a brutal and aggressive way, but challenge with an opportunity to learn something new that you did not know before. So as long as students are willing to be open to speak up and to challenge what they're learning or to understand better, to probe, that is what they need. Intellectual curiosity is key. Um, I would like to uh, touch on the fact that um, Xavier is, so I went to a, I attended a large undergraduate uh, state institution. And for most of my years there, I felt like, uh, you know, I was alone. I barely knew any faculty members. I had friends and everything. But Xavier is not that. Xavier, as we have talked about, um, uh, both through the mission and just through which actually fosters this community feeling. Um, it, it's a family. Well, and regardless of which major uh, you choose to enter in, um, that department is going to become your family. Um, so it's very important to um, communicate with the faculty and the different students that are within your department or within the division, et cetera, et cetera, so that you can start um, sort of enjoying the benefits of being part of this community. Um, and we really look forward to having you here. So the coaching, the trust factors, and all the things that we talked about today is so critical because if you take 100 successful professionals and put them in a room and ask them, okay, how many are doing what you thought you were going to be doing when you entered college, maybe five of them are going to say yes. The other 95 is going to say no. So for those students out there who, like me, and probably like most, who didn't have their entire life planned out at 18 years old, that's okay. One of the reasons the relationships and things are so important is because when you get here, we're also going to help coach you through these types of decisions. Mm -hmm. Just be open. Don't force yourself to have, to be so rigid because you think you have to have your life planned out. This is a place to grow and experience, and we're going to help you do that. So be open. Just do what you do well. Whatever you decide to do, do it well grow and move from there. And I think my, 
advice would be take advantage of the opportunities that are presented to you. Xavier is unique. Um, one of our panelists mentioned the fact that we are a black and Catholic university. We are the only black and Catholic university. We are a relatively small liberal arts college that is stellar in academic preparation for scientists. That's a kind of unique combination. We have interactions with other students. We have an emphasis on leadership. We have interactions with faculty members and that feeling of community, that feeling of family that you don't get everywhere. Xavier is unique. Her opportunities are unique. The city of New Orleans is unique. Take advantage of all of the things that make this place unique, and you'll grow so much, so much more than you even expect to grow at this time. Awesome. <laughs> oh, I if I to follow Dr. Blasier, <laughs> I would say um, you can because you're a Xavier right too. <laughs> enjoy your when you get here. When you get here, enjoy your experience. Um, take advantage of everything that Xavier has to offer. Engage your professors, like the dean says. Said we are because you are. Um, talk to your professors. Hold us accountable. Have a great time. Welcome. There are so many things that I would want to say to you. Um, There's so many wonderful things here at Xavier. Make it a good match for you. Equally as important as your studies is your social activity. Xavier has so many things on campus. All you have to do is come to the Student Union and feel the excitement. But I think that when you make that choice, and it's your choice, just love it. It will not take you long to fall in love with Xavier. And I think that when you see our, our billboards that say we're a family, I think you'll experience that very, very quickly. And I just hope that whatever choice you make, that it'll be the best one for you. Thank you all so much. What you just heard today is the fact that we're outcomes focused, we're relational, and we care. So join us in the next session where you'll hear from current students who will also echo their experiences as well, and you'll really get a chance to ask questions of their experiences as it pertains to the academics, the social environment, and just their overall experience. Again, we thank you all so much for being with us today. Welcome home. Thank you.